Hi Internet! Welcome to the Gretron YouTube channel. To celebrate the release of Final Fantasy 16, I decided to release 16 videos ranking the Final Fantasy games in a variety of categories. Each game has their strengths and weaknesses, so I thought it would be a fun way to compare and contrast the games. These lists are just my personal opinion, trying to balance objectivity and personal preference, and likely failing to satisfy anybody. So, if you disagree with my ranking, which you probably do, let me know your ranking of the subject in the comments below. In this video, I'm going to be ranking the leveling and character progression systems of all of the mainline Final Fantasy games, plus tactics. Personally, my enjoyment of an RPG doesn't have too much direct correlation to its leveling system, as it is a category I place much lower on my priority list. However, a lot of players really care about leveling systems in their RPGs, and I will admit that there are some leveling systems I enjoy much more than others. So, I figured this would be another fun video in this ranking series. Without any further ado, let's get into the ranking. Number 16, Final Fantasy XIII. Leveling in Final Fantasy XIII has level caps based on story progression, so it's less of a factor for most of the game. You can do a little grinding in between areas, but for the vast majority of the adventure, there will be clear limits on how far you can max out your stats, which is good in some ways because it keeps the game at a very deliberate difficulty. The devs will know exactly how strong you are at all times up until the game becomes Side Quest City and Grand Pulse. It makes the battles more fun, I acknowledge this. However, that means leveling isn't really much of a thing in 13, aside from the Crystarium, which is honestly pretty weak sauce. It's like a more linear version of the Sphere Grid, and feels generally pointless with how limited your options are, and honestly should have just been automated. It's a waste of time going into the Crystarium menu and just leveling up your dots in a straight line. I don't mind most of 13's linearity, but here I do think the criticism is fairly warranted. It's a generally weak leveling system. Number 15, Final Fantasy II. I like Final Fantasy II a lot, but not because of the leveling system. I'm able to get past 2's leveling system to enjoy the game for its robust story, fantastic characters, amazing music, and great environments. But even I'm able to acknowledge that 2's leveling system is one of the weaker ones in the series. It's tedious and broken in a number of ways. In 2, instead of traditional character levels like in most JRPGs, you level up individual stats based on performing specific actions. Use swords more, your sword skill goes up. Use magic more, your MP goes up. It sounds fine on paper, but it's broken. We all know it's broken. Everybody knows about the infamous trick for leveling up your HP in 2, which is having your party members hit themselves to grind out HP stat increases. The game has lots of random battles to try to compensate for its obtuse leveling system, and they are generally really difficult. Battles also offer a relatively low amount of gill, and to make matters worse, inns are priced based upon how injured your characters are, so the more HP you need to heal, the more money you need to spend. But in order to get your HP up, you need to have your HP lowered in battle. It leads to a vicious cycle of not having enough money to heal yourself and not being strong enough to survive because you haven't increased your stats enough. It's an apt analogy for capitalism in a number of ways. I need an entry-level job. Entry-level job requires seven years experience. Two's progression system is rough. If you want to try and cheese it, my advice for you is to learn some early game cure spells and use that to heal your party between levels when grinding, and then returning to the end just to restore your MP, as that's way cheaper than restoring your health. That's the special Gred Troyan method for leveling in Final Fantasy II. Overall, 2's progression system is not very good, but it does allow more control over character progression than 13, and I will admit, I think it's a lot of fun to become godlike in the early game, so for that reason 2's leveling system ranks above 13's. Number 14, Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy XI has tons of leveling systems, and while it may seem daunting and complex at first, it's actually pretty straightforward, at least initially. Instead of character levels, you have job levels, but you level up those jobs in basically the same way you level up a character in any Final Fantasy game, which is do battles and gain experience. There are also quests you can activate in your menu that allow for bonus experience and items you can use to increase your EXP as well. That's the straightforward part, but now is where we start to complicate things. In 11, you can set a sub-job to your character to buff up your character's stats and give them additional abilities to use. For example, I main Red Mage in Final Fantasy XI. My sub-job is Black Mage, which means my Red Mage gets some of the perks of my Black Mage job in the form of increased magic power and additional spells only a Black Mage can learn. However, you need to level up this sub-job separately, and it can only max out its benefits to half of your primary job's level. Okay, so you'll just grind out some enemies to level up your secondary job. No big deal, right? Well, there are complications. Each job has specific gear it can equip, so your gear for one job might not transfer to another, and some gear requires you to be a certain level to equip. In addition, if your job level becomes too high, 
weaker enemies will stop giving you experience, so you'll need to continually fight higher level monsters if you want to level up. Once you reach level 99 in your main job, the grind isn't over. There are additional forms of experience you get that lead to merit points and job points that increase your stats and offer new abilities, but the grind is incredibly slow. I've been playing for about a year at this point and I haven't maxed out a single job. And that's not even factoring in gear. Once you get to level 99 you can equip item level 119 gear, which increases your stats to the quote unquote level of a level 119 character. Not only does this make you stronger, but it makes your AI summon to party members stronger too, so it basically becomes essential to get item level 119 gear. But obtaining a higher end item level 119 gear is a difficult grind in and of itself, but it does become a necessity as you begin to take on higher level content. Oh, and like 2, you level up individual skills based upon usage. So you can level up weapon skills, buffs, healing, and the like. It sounds like a lot, but it's not that bad. Get your character to level 99 in one job, level 50 in another job, and then just play the game normally while you try to get some higher end gear. However, there is one last piece of information that's crucially important, and that is that there are level cap quests. In Final Fantasy XI, in order to reach level 99, you have to do a series of quests. If you don't do them, the game will block you from leveling up any higher, and these quests are actually some of the hardest content in the game if you're playing solo. It's incredibly brutal and arduous doing these level cap quests, but after doing them and getting some of the easier to obtain level 119 gear, I was able to comfortably solo most of Eleven's content. Overall, Eleven's leveling system isn't bad, but it's way too grindy. I don't mind a grind, but Eleven's is absolutely overkill. Number 13, Final Fantasy 1. Final Fantasy 1 has a fairly average leveling system that's standard for the JRPG genre. Gain EXP, gain levels, numbers go up. You get more powerful as you level up. That's pretty much it. There's an optional side quest to let you upgrade your character classes, which just makes your whole party stronger. It's simple, effective, and served well as a solid foundation for most of the franchise. It's not particularly interesting, but it's not bad either. I don't have too much to say about it. Number 12, Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI, much like Final Fantasy I, utilizes the classic system of gain EXP, gain levels, numbers go up. However, the game has the addition of the Magicite system to allow characters to learn additional spells and gain extra stat increases, which serves as a fun way to customize the characters, but mostly just leads to grinding so everyone has the same abilities. It's fine. Number 11, Final Fantasy XV. Final Fantasy XV, like many games in the series before it, has the classic system of gain EXP, gain levels, numbers go up. But there are a few interesting twists here that make it a bit more engaging. For one, there is also an ability point experience system. You gain AP along EXP, but AP is used on a sphere grid light system that lets you customize and choose what bonuses you get, like additional abilities, stat boosts, and being able to equip more accessories, just to name a few examples. It feels far closer to the Sphere Grid than 13's Crystarium, and thus there's a greater sense of player agency, though I find the increases in AP to be far too slow for my taste. While Final Fantasy XV will give you experience points and ability points from battles, you can also gain them from doing things like quests, riding in the car, and riding on chocobos. The experience rewards from completing quests makes completing them far more satisfying, and helps give the player incentive to try engaging in more optional content. A fantastic addition to the experience system is the Hotel system. Basically, the better the hotel you stay at, the more experience points you get. Your experience points don't actually take effect on your characters until you stay at an inn or at a campsite, and some hotels offer bonuses like doubling or tripling the amount of EXP you earn. So, if you wait a while before you rest at an inn, your experience bonuses can become massive, allowing a great cutting down on grinding time. Overall though, Final Fantasy XV can still be pretty grindy, but there's options in your grind, and the options are generally pretty good. A very solid leveling system. Number 10, Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV offers minimal grinding in comparison to a lot of other games in the series. While it's similar to XI in that it focuses on job levels instead of character levels, you gain basically all the experience you need from doing main story quests and daily dungeons, largely eliminating the need for grinding away EXP on random monsters. It's very convenient not to need to grind and just casually go through the main story, though some of the tedium of the story itself can make the overall experience feel like a grind. If you want some extra experience outside of the MSQ, there are the daily dungeons, but those can be a bit annoying if you're on time constraints and just want to do some quick leveling for a few minutes. When waiting to be automatically matched for a party in your daily roulettes, you can be waiting upwards of 20 minutes just to enter a dungeon. You're really at the mercy of the game being an MMO when it comes to leveling, unlike Eleven, where more of the leveling is within player control. In Eleven, if you want to hit up the good grinding spots, you can just go there. There's no need to wait 20 minutes. 
Still, it's not all bad. There are specific quest lines for each job that offer experience and new abilities, and the quality of the storytelling is on par with anything in A Realm Reborn. The quest lines really help add a unique flavor to your job of choice and enhances the overall experience. 14's leveling system is a mixed bag, but the fact that the MSQ EXP is so generous helps me rank it this high because it does essentially eliminate the need for grinding to a large extent. And if you do need to grind, the amount you get from daily dungeons is generally worthwhile and more engaging than just destroying hordes of random enemies. However, the wait for the dailies and lack of player control prevents me from ranking 14 any higher in this category. Number 9, Final Fantasy III Final Fantasy III has a fun character progression system. There's a main character level that goes up in the traditional gain ESP, gain levels, numbers go up way, but Final Fantasy III also has a job level separate from the character level you can also level up. I just said level a lot there, but you get the point. You've got character levels for base stats, and job levels for specialized stats for that specific job. It's pretty standard for games with a job switching mechanic, and it's solid. Honestly, I don't have too much to say about it. It's good. Number 8, Final Fantasy V. Final Fantasy V basically has the same leveling system as 3, but with more jobs and customization options. Final Fantasy V offers players the ability to mix and match abilities from different jobs, while Final Fantasy III does not have such an option. And it's for this reason alone that 5 ranks above 3 in terms of character progression. That's literally the only reason I rank it above 3, because aside from the new jobs, there's not much different. In the original version of 3 there was a penalty for switching jobs, but not in the 3D version, so again, this is basically the same thing. Final Fantasy V is often considered to be the best character progression system in the series, but in my opinion, it's not even the best usage of the job system. Hashtag Hot Take Number 7, Final Fantasy XII My ranking here is based solely on the original Final Fantasy XII. I can't attest to the job system in the remastered version of XII, but my initial gut reaction is actually resistance, because I worry about regret in regards to picking certain job classes for a character and being stuck with that for the rest of the adventure in XII. I actually like the freedom and flexibility of 12's progression system, even if it ends up with all of the characters feeling the same. I, for one, like the idea of unlocking all abilities with all of my characters. Like previous games in the series, Final Fantasy XII has a traditional level system where you gain ESP, gain levels, numbers go up. However, the biggest feature in progression that 12 is famous for is its license board system. It's very similar to the sphere grid from Final Fantasy X, except not as good. Final Fantasy XII's license board allows you to spend license points to unlock new spots on the board, and those spots will increase stats, allow players to learn new abilities, and allow players to equip certain items. It's pretty terrible in terms of lore. If you're a group of rebels, and you find a rare weapon in a treasure chest, why would you say, oh, I'm not properly licensed for this, I need to get a license from the Empire before I use this weapon to fight the Empire. The license board system is less linear than the sphere grid, and it's admittedly a really fun gameplay mechanic to unlock new licenses. I don't like how much of it is tied to equipment, as good equipment can be rendered useless if you weren't progressing your grid the correct way, but overall, it's actually a pretty fun system, and one of the best parts of Final Fantasy XII from a gameplay standpoint. Number 6, Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy IX is yet another game in the Final Fantasy series that offers the standard leveling system of numbers go up. The biggest innovation that 9 offers, customization-wise, is latent item abilities. Basically, when you equip an item in Final Fantasy IX, you can utilize special abilities that the weapon, piece of armor, or accessory has. In addition, if you equip the item long enough, you can eventually perma-learn the item's skill without needing the item equipped, and some of the abilities end up being incredibly useful. This system leads to older equipment maintaining relevancy longer into the game. You have to weigh the pros and cons of equipment swapping, rather than just equip the item with clearly better stats, because you might be in the process of leveling up a useful skill, so you might end up sticking with the weaker piece of gear just a little while longer. So, in Final Fantasy IX, you not only get to grind for levels, you get to grind for equipment skills too. I think it's a pretty solid system, and I like it. I put it in the top 6, so I clearly think it's a good character progression system. That said, I think people go a little overboard in their hyperbolic praise of 9 in this regard. 9's character progression system is really good, but it's not the best leveling system of all time. Number 5, Final Fantasy Tactics. Alright, now we're getting into top tier leveling of the Final Fantasy series. I absolutely love Final Fantasy Tactics character progression system. It's very similar to Final Fantasy V's system, where you level up character levels and job levels, but with more customization options. Basically, you gain ESP to level up your character level, and gain job points to level up your job, and unlock new abilities for said job. There are all kinds of passive abilities you can learn through different jobs, and mixing and matching them into really creative combinations allows for some of the most unique feeling characters in the Final Fantasy series. 
If I want to create a gun-wielding black mage with the ability to teleport across the map, I can do that, and it's awesome. Final Fantasy Tactics has the best utilization of the job system of any Final Fantasy game, and as someone who has beaten the other Tactics games, a better and more intuitive progression system than either of its sequels. Final Fantasy Tactics is an absolute home run when it comes to character progression. If this was the Great British Baking Show, Final Fantasy Tactics would absolutely earn the coveted Paul Hollywood handshake for its progression system. It's fantastic. Number 4, Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X is the game that introduced us to the Sphere Grid, a completely fresh take on leveling that drastically shook up the formula for the series, but also felt like a reasonable evolution into a new era. In the previous games, character progression was mostly based around character levels, with a few exceptions here or there. You gain EXP, gain a level, and become stronger. The stat increases were automatic in most of those games. Final Fantasy X, on the other hand, does not have character levels. Instead, characters earn AP that they can use to traverse the Sphere Grid. Then they utilize spheres they've obtained over the course of the game and activate those spheres to gain abilities and stat increases. While the grid initially starts off in quite a linear fashion, as it expands it becomes an incredibly fun and addictive system to use as you decide which spheres you want to unlock and when. It's a lot of fun when the character paths finally start to intersect, and you can move Orin over to Titus' path to increase Orin's speed, or moving Yuna over to Lulu's path to learn some black magic. The pacing of the sphere grid is pure perfection, and while the experience is clearly curated and linear, the player choice feels satisfying. Do I want to increase my strength, my speed, or get a new ability? I can't attest to the remasters of the game, but unlike 12, where you are locked into a set path and locked out of certain abilities, the Sphere Grid does allow you to move back and forth so that nothing is truly missable, and I like that feature quite a bit. Also, Final Fantasy X doesn't tie equipment usage to the Sphere Grid, so you don't need to spend your hard-earned points just to use that cool new weapon you found. The Sphere Grid also surpasses similar systems like the Crystarium, because there aren't enough branching paths in the latter to justify the tedium of the menus, and it's superior to 15's AP system because the rewards are more consistent and less tedious to obtain. When it comes to this kind of leveling system, Final Fantasy X Sphere Grid is exactly what you would want. It's absolutely brilliant. Number 3, Final Fantasy IV. Final Fantasy IV has probably the most standard RPG progression system of any game in the series. You gain ESP to level up, and as you level up, not only do your stats increase, but you also learn new abilities as well. This is all done automatically when you level up, without any menu navigation. It's the standard system that most RPGs are based on, and there's not much in terms of customization here. However, the streamlined nature of this system is actually a blessing. Final Fantasy IV's level progression system is so perfectly balanced and executed that it's easy to see why this system is the standard for JRPGs, because the way IV does it here is absolute perfection. Final Fantasy IV does not allow for swapping of character classes. Each character is in a predefined role, which means that their skill path is set up in advance. There's no deciding whether to buy a spell from a shop or which sphere you want to use to progress your character. Nope, the character will just learn new abilities automatically. And honestly, it's pretty great. The immediate satisfaction of hearing the victory fanfare and seeing that characters have learned new abilities is incredibly satisfying. The system feels intuitive and natural, and because of its streamlined nature, 4 takes away a lot of the menu navigation and busy work that can ultimately become tedious. Instead, you can focus on the extremely well-balanced combat that's specified to your exact party combination and the brilliant narrative. It's a very curated experience, but it remains satisfying to this day. Final Fantasy IV's leveling system is simple. It's the standard upon which RPG leveling is built, and it is a perfect execution of that system, and quite possibly the best execution of that system ever done. If you had to pick a single leveling system to be representative of the entire Final Fantasy series, nay, of JRPGs in general, Final Fantasy IV is the perfect choice. Number 2, Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII, like Final Fantasy IV, offers traditional leveling up in the form of gain HP, gain levels, numbers go up. However, instead of automatically learning new abilities like in IV, VII offers two unique systems for character progression with the Materia system and the Limit Break system. The Materia system allows you to level up different Materia, which are items you can equip to a character to allow them to use special abilities. These can be swapped freely between characters, and as you gain new materia, you can pair different materia together to do all kinds of crazy stuff. A famous example of this is pairing the final attack materia, which automatically does a final move as the player is knocked out by an enemy, and pairing it with a revive, and this combination will automatically revive the player character upon death. Finding different materia, using them in battle, and swapping them between characters is one of the great joys of Final Fantasy VII. It's an addictive system that's easy to grasp and insanely fun to master. 
In addition to the materia system and traditional character levels, Final Fantasy VII also has different limit breaks for each character, which are special moves the characters can use in battle. There are four different levels of limit breaks, with two limit breaks per level. The system for unlocking limit breaks is as follows. To unlock the second limit break of a level, you have to use the first limit break of that level a certain number of times. Then, after you've unlocked the second limit break of the level, you need to kill a certain number of enemies to advance to the next limit break level. Once you unlock six limit breaks, then you're able to unlock level four limit breaks, which require questing to obtain a special item. It's a fantastic system. In this way, you still get the skill progression system of four, where characters will naturally learn abilities through combat, but you also get the addictively fun customization options of the materia system. And since they can be freely switched between characters, you don't have to worry about leveling each individual spell on each individual character. You get the best of both worlds, individual feeling characters, and easy ability swapping customization. All in all, Final Fantasy VII offers an excellent balance of traditional leveling alongside a robust and fun customization system. It's absolutely incredible. Number 1, Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy VIII's junction and draw systems are extremely divisive among Final Fantasy fans. People commonly complain that the system is too grindy and that you need to spend hours drawing spells from enemies to improve your stats, and complain that when you level up the game gets harder because the enemies scale with the player's level. These people are just bad at playing Final Fantasy VIII. I don't know what to tell you. Get good, scrubs. Joking aside, I think a lot of people who dislike the junction and draw system have a fundamental misunderstanding of the optimal mechanics behind it, and that 8 is ultimately a far less grindy game than most games in the series. Final Fantasy VIII features a traditional leveling system, gain EHP, gain levels, stats increase. However, the stat increases from leveling up are incredibly minor, and the enemies in the game scale with the player's level. They get stronger as your character level increases, but only as your character level increases. The main progression system in 8 revolves around the Junction system, where you gather different magical spells and pair them to different stats for bonuses. The more of a spell you Junction to a stat, and the higher level the spell, the more that stat increases. To obtain spells, you generally have one of three options. Use a command called Draw in battle which steals the spell from enemies, interact with draw points, set locations on the game maps that allow you to obtain spells periodically, or refine items and cards from the Triple Triad minigame into spells. You can become a god-tier level character very early in the game with maybe an hour total of grinding. A lot of people complain about how tedious it is to draw spells from enemies. Well, good news, you don't have to. You can use draw points or play Triple Triad. You know, Triple Triad, the universally beloved minigame that many consider to be the best minigame in the series. Oh no, my grinding is playing a fun card game instead of hitting the X button over and over again in random battles. And as far as enemies scaling with you, there's an ability you can get from the summon Diabolos that allows for you to turn off random battles, which means you stop gaining ESP because bosses don't give you any ESP upon defeating them, only random battles do. And since the bosses don't scale, that means that you are an all-powerful god plowing through any obstacle placed before you. Thus, Final Fantasy VIII becomes an incredibly fun boss rush that gives you the ability to zoom through the game while also being able to take time and more casually enjoy the game's stunning visuals without constant battle interruptions. Just soak up the scenery and feel the sheer joy of crushing your opponents with your might. Again, there is far less grinding in Final Fantasy VIII than basically any other game in the series if you know how to use the system properly, which isn't that hard, and if you know how to use it, you realize how insanely fun it is to become a god among mortals. As far as I'm concerned, Final Fantasy VIII has the best leveling system in the series. Thanks for watching this video. Again, these lists are my personal opinion, and I'm definitely curious to see you guys posting your rankings in the comments below. Be sure to do the YouTube things, the liking, the subscribing, etc. And if you like this video, don't forget to check out the other rankings in the series. Thanks for watching, and I hope you find peace and happiness in your life. Cheers!